Hi, welcome to the Black Sheep and Kira Du. Today I want to speak about this stuff behind me, Bracken, and uh, a little bit about uh, how I want to bring back these woodland margins into productivity. One of the main goals here at Ankiradu is to increase the amount of ground that's covered with native woodland. But currently, about 13% of the land area under management is native stock. And that's all from either native regeneration or it's areas of ground that have been continuously under woodland cover for hundreds of years. And this can be seen um, right back to the Cassini maps, which are available online. I'll, I'll post the, the link below here. But yeah, woodland management was what really got me started on this journey. And I thought it might be cool to, to try and derive some value out of what was always really seen as, um, you know, in the farmer's mindset, as um, just kind of waste ground, really, ground that really didn't have much value. So that's what got me into it uh, initially. So I went and I attended this, this course, um, which was all about creating a management plan for your woodland. And just through reading around the subject of small woodland management, you go down the rabbit hole a little bit, you go into the areas of continuous cover forestry and you start looking at how the biosystems and all those interactions really work and benefit each other. Um, and that just fascinated me, the fact that a, a natural system could be so, so imbalanced. So, uh, yeah, I kept on studying, uh, eventually found permaculture, um, delved into that for a year or so, and then from permaculture into regen ag, and uh, you know that's what really kind of gets me fired these days is the idea that regenerative approaches to agriculture, you know, and moving back towards a more local market-based, diverse polyculture style farms. And you consider over the last, you know, seven, eight hundred years, we've gone from a, an island that had 80, 85 percent, perhaps plus woodland cover, to one that now sits in the region of one to three percent, depending on the uh, the studies you you consult, um, along with that destruction of habitat and destruction of you know tree stock and, and cover, um, what we've also done is we've we've actually lost a, a, what I think would have at one time been a really important part of our identity, particularly for for certain pockets of the island, which is that wood culture, that wood law. Um, you know, we look to countries like um, Poland. We look, you know, swathes of Eastern Europe where um, there still is old growth, um, natural or semi-natural ancient woodland. We look to pockets of the UK where there's, a, you know, there's a thriving culture, our nearest neighbour. Um, and the pe people that are doing great work in it, people like Ben Law, people like Ray Mears, um, people like Hill Holt Wood, which is a community um, woodland management project. Um, you know, these are the guys that are, and girls that are passing on the skills to uh, a new generation skills like charcoal making and and all sorts of craft wood kind of projects um, coppice management and the, and the importance of it you know I mean we look behind us here and we've got overstood uh, hazel which I'm planning to get into um, this winter and put that back into a into a rotation and you know because it's been so long and we had such a you know a devastating impact on our native woodland cover over the last few hundred years, we re that link has been severed. So along with bringing back the native woodland cover, um, you know, I'd like to be part of that movement that brings back some of these more traditional skills that would have been an inherent part of our culture for hundreds of years. I'd like to be part of the, the movement to help bring those skills back so that we can actually see value in these pockets of, uh, of woodland rather than considering them as, you know, the, the forgotten wastelands. We shouldn't be afraid to, to interact with these things. We should view them as the, the valuable resource that they are and, and, and uh, look for ways to integrate them into our farming systems accordingly. And I think part of the issue is when you speak to people, uh, particularly in the, the west of Ireland, the only real example of woodland establishment has been the the uh, proliferation of these 
monoculture spruce evergreen crops which are you know fairly short short uh, rotation 30 40 years get in get them up and uh, and harvest and start it all over again and these areas you know we, we've got quite a few of them quite a number of the, those style of plantations around this neck of the woods here what I'm speaking about here is is intelligent considered planting um, it's ecosystem management really we're, we're looking to design farm systems that slot nicely into ecosystem processes you know we're not trying to come and impose ego we're not trying to come in and impose um, horsepower <laughs> we're looking to um, to exploit the ecosystem processes for our own benefit um, where we can some big old granddaddy birch there a bit of willow peeping through and then as we head up the hill back into this hazel nice old hazel growth going on there everyone's favorite redundant sheepdog loving it and then as we move across the site we get into the major thorn in the side here which is the uh, infestation of breaking um, in the summer this stuff is you know six foot high it's uh, it's well overhead you, can, you can't walk through it so just for scale this will give you an idea of the height of bracken here and uh, no I'm not uh, sitting down on the job <laughs> not at all so I am like 5'11", and you can see this is up to my head quite comfortably. Yeah, sure, there are chemical solutions to it. And I think about uh, 15 or fifteen years ago or so, I remember herbicides being used on this site, actually. Um, it's a great effect, you know, it kept them, one application was keeping them away for, keeping the bracken at bay for maybe four years or so. But of course, that's not in my... Um, it's not a part of my vision for this place. You know, I'm looking for ways to bring this ground back into productivity. And for me, in this location and with my particular context, that means grass. The way I want to do that is by managing pigs, pigs through this landscape to disturb that rhizome for part of the year. This is an example of the, the bracken that we're fighting against. You can see it it's taking over this wee bit of a hillside. This area here is uh, too wet for the bracken to grow. This is a spring and if we keep walking what do we come upon? Look at this. This is an area where the tractor span when it was trying to get up the up the hill here and that disturbance has been enough to knock back the bracken locally you can see there we're we're surrounded by it completely and uh, just there in the middle where the disturbance has been is the um, this lovely fresh flush of grass you know and that's what we want this is what gives me the confidence to have a go at sticking pigs in here next year to see if I can't emulate that localized disturbance and end up with a nice crop of forage in the coming years, you know, with a, an upside of tasty bacon. The plan as it stands at the moment will be to stock up in the uh, early part of 2018, um, run them through spring, summer, and then look to harvest uh, and kill out uh, around about August time. So um, this site here uh, where the, the bracken is at its strongest and gives us the most trouble is about three acres in size so at the moment I'm thinking of three one acre pens um, low tensile bull wire electrified bull wire system um, you know four strands something like that and uh, let them in 
course, certain breeds root better than others. They will make a mess. But with that combination of uh, animal impact and or breast, uh, you know, that's what holistic management's all about. You know, the only tools available to us are technology, fire, animal impact, or rest. And it's a combination of how we use those four tools that uh, affect whether or not we're moving towards our holistic goal or away from it. So it'll be exciting to, to see. Watch this space. That's it for another instalment from the farm here. Uh, let me know if you like this video. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you're not doing already, follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching.